What's up everyone, I'm Patrick and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So if you work with HTTP, then you probably know the requests module, which is a very simple HTTP library for Python to send HTTP requests. But there is a more modern client, which is called HTTPX, and it calls itself a next generation HTTP client for Python. And this is now my favorite HTTP client in applications where speed is an important factor. So in this video, we learn about it. So I show you how to get started with it and we go over some basic features, then I also mention a few advanced features and I show you how to do async code with it and I even show you some best practices how you get the maximum speed improvement with async code and in the end we do a speed comparison between requests and HTTPX and also between sync and async code. So let's get started. Now before we jump to some code examples, let's quickly learn how to get started and go over some of the features. So we can install it with pip install HTTPX. It is open source and it has 9k stars at the moment, which is pretty cool. And to get started, we can then say import HTTPX and for example, send a get request with HTTPX.get. And as you can see, the API is quite similar to requests. And in fact, it is almost identical. So you should have no trouble at all when you want to switch. Then you also get a command line interface if you want to use it from the command line. And then some of the features are listed here. So it builds on the well-established usability of requests. So as I said, it is almost almost identical. There are some changes. So if you want to read more about the requests compatibility guide, then I recommend checking out this site. Then we get a synchronous interface and also async support. So I show you how to do this in a moment. Then we get HTTP 1 and 2 support. We also get the ability to make requests directly to WSGI or ASGI applications. So for example, we can use this to test Flask or Fast API apps. And I also also show you a code example how to do this. And then also I want to show that the official fast API docs recommends this for async tests. So this is pretty nice. Then we get strict timeouts. We have fully type annotations and we have 100% test coverage plus all the standard features of the requests module. So this is pretty nice. And now let's jump to the code. The first thing I want to show you is that the core API is identical to requests. So for example, with requests, we can send a get request and we can pass auth parameters and then we can access attributes like the status code, the content, headers, encoding or JSON. So if we run this, then this works, but we can simply replace this with HTTPX. So we can import HTTPX after installing it, of course, and then we say HTTPX.get and then we get all the same attributes. So if we run this, then this works as well now with HTTPX. Now let's go over some more basic functionality. So in the same way that we send a get request, we can also send post, put, delete, head or options requests. And we can also send data by using the data parameter and then use a dictionary here. Then we can also pass parameters with the params parameter and also use a dictionary here. Then we can send custom headers by using the headers parameter. We can send JSON encoded data with the JSON parameter. So all these are the same in requests. Then we can easily access cookies by saying R, so response.cookies and then access this like a dictionary or we can send authentication parameters by using the auth parameter, or we can easily set a timeout. So the default is five, but we can also set timeout, for example, to one. So again, all of this is quite similar to requests. Now let's talk about advanced usage with the HTTPX client, which is similar to requests.session. So in the examples we've seen before with the top level API, for example, httpx.get or .post, HTTPX has to establish a new connection for every single request. And if we have lots of requests, then this quickly can become inefficient. So a better way to handle this is by using a client which uses HTTP connection pooling. And this can bring significant performance improvements compared to using the top level API. And it's actually quite simple to use this. So we use this as context manager and say with HTTPX client as client. And then we 
can use the same functions with the, as with the top level API. So we can say client.get or we can say client.post. We can also use the same parameters, for example, send the headers. And then the response is also the same. So we can access the same attributes like status code or JSON, for example. Yeah, so usually, um, for example, inside here, we can have a for loop with over 100 requests and then use the client. And this is much more efficient than saying httpx.get each time. And what's also pretty cool is that we can share configuration across requests. For example, we can pass the headers argument in here and then each time we send the request, it has the headers. So we don't have to do this every single time. So yeah, this is how to work with the client. Now let's learn how to use the async API. So we've just seen the normal client and in a similar way, we can use the async client. So here we say async with HTTPX async client as client. And then on the client, we can use the same functions, for example, client get or client post. And here, of course, we have to await this to get the actual response and then we can print this. And to run this, for example, we can wrap this in an async dev function and then, for example, say async IO run and then the main function. And if we run this, we get the response. So this is how to do it in an async way. So we do a speed comparison between the async client and the normal client in a moment. And then I also show you a best practice, how you get the maximum performance with an async client. But before I want to show you one more feature, how we can use HTTPX to test web applications. So with HTTPX, we can call directly into Python web apps. And this is especially helpful for testing. For example, with a Flask app, we can do this. Here we have our app and then we defined one route which returns hello world. And now to test this, we don't have to start the app and the Flask server separately. We can simply say with HTTPX client as client and here we pass in the app and a base URL. And then we can call client get and then use this route and then we can test this. For example, we can assert status code equals equals 200 or our text equals equals hello world and then I also print this so that you see that this is working and now if we run this then you see it printed hello world and all the tests were successful. So this is how we do it with Flask. And if you have an ASGI server, for example, with Fast API and an async app, we can do it in a similar way. So we here we have our Fast API app and route. And then here we say async with async client. Then we also call client get and await this. And then again, we can do our tests. So this is directly from the official documentation. So check this out if you want to learn more about this. Now let's do some speed comparisons. So we want to compare the top level API of HTTPX and requests. Then we also want to compare it with a session or a client. And then we also want to compare it with an async client. And then I show you how to do it the right way with an async client. So first, let's compare the top level API. So here we have a function that should collect all 150 Pokemon. So 150 times we call requests get and then call the API and collect the Pokemons. And then here we start the timer, execute the function and then print the time. And then we do the same with HTTPX. So here the only difference is that we use HTTPX.get. So let's run this and see how long it takes. And we can see that both took 21 seconds. So there's actually no improvement if we just use the top level API. And this shows that requests is still perfectly fine for simple scripts. But now let's move on and compare this with the requests session or HTTPX client. So this is actually the same code, but now here we start a client and then say client get. And then here we use a session and say session get instead of using the top level API. So now, Let's run this code. And we see the client and session brought an improvement. So 7.1 and 6.8 seconds, but still it's almost at the same level. So again, there's not a lot of improvement, but now the actual improvement comes with async code. So let's have a look at how to do this. So the async code is where HTTPX really shines and we cannot get this with requests. So this is where we can see a huge improvement, but there is a wrong way of doing it with an async client and a right way. For this, I can recommend this great blog post on the Twilio blog. So I will put this in the description. So the wrong way of doing it is like this. So we open our async client as client 
And then we say for a number in all 150 Pokemons, and then for each Pokemon, we await client get. So this part here is inefficient. So the better way of doing it with async code, and for this, we have to have a little bit of knowledge about async code. So the better way of doing it is to wrap this in another function. So we say async dev get Pokemon, and here we say await client. And then in the actual loop, we only create this as a task. So we call async IO create task and then put in this get Pokemon function. And then we say await async IO gather all tasks. And then we get this. And now if we run this, then it can perform all these tasks at the same time and doesn't block. So as you can see with the wrong way of doing it, it took 6.9 seconds. So this is almost identical with the normal client. But now if we do it this way, then it only took 0.57 seconds. So this is a huge improvement if you use async code the right way. All right, then this is all I wanted to show you about HTTPX. I hope you learned something new and now you can consider this for your future projects. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, please leave a like and then I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.